Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is David Calvert, and I'll be, uh, be speaking to you for the majority of this morning. Um, thank you for joining, and uh, Formulation Advantage Scotland we thought might provoke some, some discussions. So uh, hopefully you'll find the next half hour or so to be of value and to be of interest. Um, this session is being recorded with a number of people who said they couldn't join, so we've said that we would record the session and then post a recording. And similarly, if uh, some of your colleagues wish to hear it after the webinar, then, then we'll be happy to send you a link to this, um, to this recording. Before to actually start off this morning, um, as an introduction, I'm going to uh, let um, Chris Corden and Lillian Hamilton do a little introduction from Scottish Enterprise. So, Chris, I've just unmuted you, so um, hopefully you'll be able to speak. <laughs> well, hopefully you can hear me. That, yes, can hear I me? can. Yes, I can. That's good. Right. So, um, basically, we, uh, Scottish Enterprise today, the Regional Development Agency for Scotland, following the TSB's Special Interest Group report in 2013, uh, we thought there was probably some quite interesting research going on and also some work going on within the, the company base in Scotland, but we didn't know exactly what was available. So we commissioned um, iFormulate to look at the industry side and um, an organization called Interface to look at the academic side to make sure that we were more conversant with the, the capabilities uh, within Scotland and also hopefully to throw up some of the, the opportunities that you know, the, the capabilities that we discover um, would actually give us. So we commissioned this report about uh, three or four months ago, and we're, it's still a, a sort of work in progress at the moment. Mm -hmm. But we presented uh, some of the information at the Natural Products meeting in Inverness last week, and we thought it was useful just to um, disseminate some more of the information. And uh, so on that basis, I'm going to hand over to Dave, who is going to be taking us through the, the iFormula work. So over to you, Dave. OK, thank you, Chris. Um, just for everybody who's, who's on the line, um, you've all been muted. So um, you will be unmuted towards the end of the webinar with a chance to ask some questions. If you have any comments or any questions uh, as we're going through the agenda and, and they, they don't want to wait until the end, then please you can use the chat function on, on your control screen to ask those questions and I'll try and answer them as I'm going along or save them up until the end. So thanks for that, Chris. And, and as he said, this is um, really work in progress around a consultation that we've been asked to do on the industry needs and opportunities for formulation um, from an industrial point of view. But as everybody was on the line, we thought we'd take the opportunity also to um, go briefly through a parallel piece of work on the academic expertise around formulation in Scotland um, and try and outline some of the work that Interface have been doing. And then also to try and invite you to participate further in, in this piece of work that we've been asked to carry out. So just moving on to the next slide. Okay, so just a little bit of the background there that, that Chris spoke about. Um, Scottish Enterprise really asked us to carry out a mapping and, and a development study of, of how important the formulation is to the chemical use and industry base in Scotland, and to really look, uh, more importantly, for some opportunities, some challenges and needs that industry has. So we've been working through various lists to try and consult with, with industry. Um, we've also been trying to link that to the academic exercise that we'll be speaking about a little bit later, and, and perhaps uh, most important to ensure that Scotland plays a part in some of the um, other initiatives that are going on around formulation uh, nationally, such as the uh, TSB or Innovate UK uh, Special Interest Group and the planned National Formulation Centre. And we thought in this webinar we'd also try and take the opportunity to outline to you what's actually happening around that National Formulation Centre and what may be announced next week. Um, our intention is to finish this work in December and then to submit a report to Scottish Enterprise, which they will review and then will disseminate. So if you're interested in seeing a version of the final report, 
then please get in touch with Chris and Zoe in the Scottish Enterprise, and I'm sure that they will ensure that you actually see that, that report. So I think one of the um, major questions as we've been talking to people has been, uh, well, what is formulation? So it, it's quite important, and, and people sometimes, I, I remember uh, a few years ago, I didn't realize I actually had been doing formulation for over 20 years. Um, but formulation is really about trying to deliver effects where they are needed, the effects of products and the effects of those products. And it's all about design, development, and manufacture of complex multi-component and multi-phase products. Uh, and many people, it's interesting as you describe what work you're doing, they don't realize that everything they buy, in essence, is a formulation. Um, if you go out and you buy an emulsion or a gel or a cream, a powder, a tablet, all of that is only possible through formulation. Um, it's used in such a large number of industries, pharmaceuticals, personal care, uh, detergent cleaners, agrochem, all listed on those slides, plus many more. Aquaculture was mentioned last week when we were in Inverness um, and in, in food and drink, etc. Formulation isn't easy, and perhaps that's why it's uh, often either um, not exactly ignored, but uh, not necessarily um, regarded as a science because in some people it's an art, but it, it, it is how about controlling a complex microstructure and making that product perform. And the formulation produces a product and it must perform. And um, in many cases, and the interface study has shown, it, it, it isn't necessarily um, an academic subject. There are some courses now around on formulation science and there are some in development, but it's often an element of, of colloid science or physical chemistry or chemical engineering, nanotechnology or biotechnology. Um, but it's, 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 in many cases, people say it's difficult um, and people, formulators are, are magical, mythical people. Well, um, they are, but it's also improving in many ways. So formulation in the UK. Um, KTN did a study, and that's uh, the special interest group report is available online if you wish to uh, download it, or if you don't know where to find it, then please, after this webinar, please get in touch. Uh, but through that study, um, there were a number of uh, significant findings, and I guess the most important one is that formulation does significantly add value, and it can be a multiplier from times three up to times 100. And the market for formulation in the UK is large. 180 billion pounds per year. Um, it also exports, and there is a number of uh, potentials for the UK to take advantage of the emerging overseas markets. But as we said, it is complex and does have challenges. Um, it is very much often, well, we know that works and we'll carry on doing that. Um, but the scientific understanding and the predictive modeling that is coming. Um, and the academic expertise to solve real industrial problems is actually coming as well. Um, so that dark art, I think, will start to disappear as we move on through the next few years. Um, so the UK KTM study is moving it forward. We'll talk about the National Formulation Centre. But what about Scotland? What does Scotland specifically need? What are the challenges for Scotland? And what are the opportunities for growth within Scotland in formulation? And how can it move from an art to a science? almost everywhere. And when we started the study, it, it was key to see also, you know, does this fit with what Scotland wants to do? And this is the Chemical Sciences Scotland's platform for growth, and it has 10 elements. And as you can see, you know, clean technology to reduce climate change impact. Well, if you're going to develop things, you may need to reformulate to make that clean. Reducing costs, yes, definitely that's something that uh, is there for formulation. Regulatory climate often drives reformulation, and uh, some of the breach regulations will drive you to reformulate. Um, it involves R&D, as we've just seen, an extra value, and uh, if you are formulating, you are definitely innovating. Um, there is a challenge in formulation around skills, so it fits with that one. Um, we believe uh, that formulation is an attractive sector. Um, work still to be done to promote that as a, as a career choice. Um, and really raise the profile of formulation to the public. Um, so when we look at those, those elements of uh, Chemical Sciences Scotland's platform for growth, we can often say that formulation fits into uh, a large number of those. So the UK National Formulation Centre. 
Um, this is really a potted history of the story of that formulation centre. In, in May 2012, the TSB, which is now known as Innovate UK, uh, published its high value manufacturing strategy and formulation was one of those 22 key competencies that it discussed. So following that, they set up a special interest group, SSIG, uh, around formulation and they set the challenging question of how can Innovate UK or TSB as it was at that time best support innovation in the UK formulating companies. Out of that study, which involved extensive industry uh, collaboration and consultation, um, there came a, a UK collaborative R&D competition, which was extremely successful. It was oversubscribed, and the quality of the proposals that went into Innovate UK was so high that they actually increased their investment in the total program. So it moved from what I believe was around about 6 million they had envisaged investing up to 9.2 million from Innovate UK. So that's an indication of the high quality of work which is being done within the UK on formulation and how important also that Innovate UK regard formulation as being to the success of, of, the, com of the country. So following that R&D competition and almost at the same time a centre model was developed, so a national formulation centre model was developed and that involves a £50 million overall investment which would be split 50-50 between public and private investment. Um, formulation is a flagship in the chemical growth strategy and at this very moment there is a, a UK biz uh, Innovate UK biz bid for £19 million to provide setup funding and that has been put forward to George Osborne for funding in the autumn statement which takes place next week. Um, we don't know whether that is actually going to happen. Um, decisions are often made at the last minute but we are hopeful. But whether the centre gets set up or doesn't get set up, um, the objective of Scottish Enterprises may make sure that there is a role for Scotland in that national formulation centre and that really is part of the study. But what is that formulation centre going to look like? And this is an extract from the report that the TSB at the time published. And there are a number of strategic industry members um, who will take part in this and will, will provide some of that private contribution. Um, but it is a hub and spoke model. So the National Formulation Centre is not necessarily intended to be a large physical centre. It will be housed within the high value manufacturing catapult. Um, and it will have at its, in that small centre some senior experts in the business development and some project managers and, and project scientists. Of the work that would be done there, um, modelling is, is regarded as being key to try and move formulation from being the, the art and the black art into a much more predictive science. There's a large initiative around big data and how you can actually lose, use a lot of the data and the computing power we have in the UK. Process and scale up, physical sciences, so some facilities where people can tap into um, a lot of the measuring capability within the UK, and other spokes as the centre develops. So it is not fixed in stone and there are opportunities to try and, and drive that where industry and also where the strengths are of academia. If we look at what it will do, um, again, really continuing on that theme of moving it from being a pragmatic black heart, there will be radical formulated product design and moving it forward to being predicting. So designing the right product right first time and then also the, the process design. So once you've designed it right, making the product right and making it right first time. So there will be elements in, within the program of formulating for delivery and performance. So again, the word predictive coming out constantly throughout all of these. Stability is possibly one of the most important elements and one of the least understood elements and most frustrating elements of formulation development because often you put it on a shelf and you just hope that it stays stable. But the idea of the formulation center will be, out, will be able to predict and develop tools to help you to predict and design for product stability and for robust processes and then again the element of the carbon footprint, the sustainable products and the sustainable processes and how do you formulate for that and for zero environmental impact so that may involve raw materials, the process, um, making the most from the products you've got, um, minimizing water footprint, VOCs, etc. So this is what the, the National Formulation Centre would intend to do. 
but this is also what industry wants to do. So that's quite important, uh, irrelevant to what happens within the funding element. So we started this formula, uh, the formulation consultation in Scotland. We had a, a number of questions, and, and we really wanted to understand from people what is the relevance, uh, both from a commercial point of view and technical, and importance of formulation to your company and, in your eyes, to the industry in general. Um, what do you do? to make the most of, of formulation, and what challenges do you have? Um, what could you offer if we were to set up a formulation community in Scotland? What do you believe you could bring and what would you want? Um, what new ideas, initiatives um, could be considered long or short term, and what could the various agencies that are around to actually support Scottish industries, what could they do, and what could they put in place to try and help you to be successful? And that was regarded as being one of, one of the key things that we were able to do. So, as Chris said, we're, uh, it's work in progress. Um, but I guess we, we have some initial thoughts and some initial themes that are emerging from our work. So the initial thoughts are, are very much that the industry base in Scotland um, is, in terms of the sectors, very similar to the national. Uh, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, healthcare, food and drink, cleaning. There are often some miscellaneous applications, oil fields and explosives we've uh, seen as being uh, relevant in Scotland. I guess the big difference from the, the national picture is there are no obvious major formulating companies present in, in Scotland. If you look on the, on the right hand side of that slide, all of those companies have been um, participating in National Formulation Centre um, and very few of those have actually got formulation and R&D facilities in Scotland. However, there are a lot of young uh, enthusiastic and developing SMEs where formulation is extremely significant to their business and a number of supply chain companies so a number of raw material suppliers where formulation is critical to their success they may not formulate but they need to know what it does in a formulation because their product is useless and the effects are useless unless it can be delivered via a formulation so quite often they need to be able to explain and demonstrate a formulation to some of the people they are selling to. And I guess some of our discussions have also started with, well, I'm not a formulator. Um, well, actually, in many cases, it's been shown that they are actually a formulator. or formulation is key to the success of the company. And the awareness of what formulation is appears to be uh, quite a critical element. So if we look at some of the emerging themes for formulation um, and from the study that we've seen um, and they're, uh, they're still in progress but definitely the awareness and what formulation is needs raising within within some of the companies in Scotland and in many cases people want to be recognized that they are actually formulating so recognize that formulation is significant recognize that it does play a major economic role within the success of companies people often feel as though they're uh, they could do with understanding from other people who are formulating, but not necessarily their competitors, and understanding what's going on. And, and that's a common theme that comes across from, from the National Centre as well, is that you can learn, a pharmaceutical company can learn from an agrochemical company, an inks and coatings company can learn from a pharmaceutical company, and vice versa, the pharmaceutical companies and formulation developers can learn from lots of other interests. And therefore, perhaps there is going to be, uh, there is a need for a Scottish special interest group to be set up. Unsurprisingly, funding has been a theme that's come through and, uh, you know, how can they actually, they, they, they've got a blockage and it may be funding, it may be actually just knowing where to go to get some resources. There are some market specific needs, uh, some of which, because they are very specific, will be quite difficult, we believe, to uh, solve through. Um, through something by uh, Scottish Enterprise, but again, they will be put into the reports. One of the interesting um, options has been around shared facilities. Many small companies do not have access to a lot of um, equipment that would be very valuable to them. Um, and the thought of a, a, a laboratory where you could have a, a rheometer or a particle size um, seemed to be greeted very well by, by many of the people we've spoken to. Uh, they've also spoken about perhaps rather than it being actually in one physical place, perhaps it could be a mobile laboratory where it was taken to their site, they were trained and then left with the equipment for a week and then somebody returned and came back. 
uh, a week later and took the equipment back and it was tethered at university. Obviously there are some restrictions around that, some pieces of equipment you would not put into the back of a trailer, um, but there's certainly some equipment and a lot of the equipment manufacturers are used to taking their equipment out and demonstrating to people. So that is certainly something that, that should be considered. Companies have also spoken about the, the skills gap um, and sometimes the knowledge gap. So whether that be from consultants and whether or not the consultancy skills available that they require for their specific requirements. They don't necessarily know about the academics and we'll coming to that study later and who can actually help them in Scotland. And their own workforce, how have they been trained? Um, could they learn a little bit more to help them to develop products quicker? Uh, regulatory issues have been flagged up also as being key so that people have said, you know, we need to know what the regulations are about. There are some things within Chemical Sciences uh, Scotland that are helping to address that. But again, you know, what are those that, those regulations that are coming up in five years that may need uh, a reformulation or some initiative around formulation? So some specific uh, help there has been requested. There will be more, um, and really this is, this is the status of the consultation. It is still open. Um, you will obviously, as I said, this is being recorded, but if, if you wish to contact myself, uh, Jim Bullock who is also on the line, or, or Malcolm McKechnie, um, our email addresses are there, and I know some of you have already spoken to us, but we're keen to hear from more companies. Um, if you have any thoughts on what we've done specifically on the industry, then there will be uh, an opportunity at the end of the webinar, and there will be the report distributed in, in Q1 2015. We didn't want to miss the opportunity to let you know, and, and some of the questions about, well, we don't know who's out there to help us. We, we didn't want to miss the opportunity. so. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Interface who've done this, if we're doing this work for Scottish Enterprise, are unable to present. But I'm I'm going to try and present their slides in the best light. And it's uh, Siobhan Jordan and Rain Longhurst of Interface, and Siobhan's details were on that slide. Um, but they've been doing a parallel study to look at academic expertise relevant to formulation. Um, their work has been very similar to ours: desk research and a series of interviews trying to understand some of the research that's relevant to formulation and is being carried out in Scotland and looking at the unique Scottish strengths uh, that could support national plans, be that UK or be that Scotland. And also to find out from the academics who are consulted if they are interested in being involved or participating in those future developments around formulation. Some of the themes that they've um, uncovered um, are not too different uh, to the themes that we've found in our industrial study. Um, formulation is not necessarily a subject, um, but there are a large number of scientific capabilities from across a wide range of disciplines that actually are relevant and are being worked on in Scotland and would be extremely useful to the formulation community. They have found also that academics in multiple sectors um, have got the ability to add something to formulation and also to work together to actually help formulating companies. Um, they similarly to ourselves often found that, that people didn't think they did formulation or that formulation wasn't an area they worked in, but when you talk about it, it is very much so. Um, but they, again, similarly believe that there is an opportunity to, to, to facilitate cross-sector opportunities and capitalize on Scotland's strengths. So, um, a lot of this work and, and the way it will join together will link together some of the academic expertise in Scotland and some of the industry people who need that help and looking for new areas of R&D and looking for ways that, um, similar to the iBioIC program where you could actually work across different academic sectors. Again, um, you can go and look on the Interface website, get in touch or contact Rain or Siobhan and again, I'm so there will be a report, and if you're interested in seeing that report that's available for public uh, consultation, then you can contact Raymond Siobhan, or probably best to go to Scottish Enterprise and to Chris Antwilling. So we have come really to the end of the, the formal side of this webinar, and, and really I'm, I'm happy to uh, either take some, some questions via the chat function or to actually um, take questions over, over formally via, via speaking. So I'm going to unmute everyone, hopefully. Uh, 
Chris is Chris, would you like to say something? I was just going to sort of reiterate what you're saying about the what's interesting for us is that the interface findings and your findings are meshing quite quickly, which is useful from our perspective because then we can start looking at how we can support the individual companies to best develop their products. And I think importantly as well how the sector itself can work together to improve the facilities and you know, you know, what, what the needs are to move forward. Okay. Does anybody else have any any thoughts or questions that they wish to say now? Please either speak up or put your hand up. Um, I have a question. This is uh, Tiffany Wood from the Edinburgh Complex Flows Partnership. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can, yes. Yes, yes. good. Um, I was just wondering, um, would it be possible to find out who else is um, part of this conversation, who's sort of listening in um, to the webinar and who's interested in this, so we can begin to build a network um, of people in Scotland who are involved? I think I think there'll be there'll be no problem with that, Tiffany. I think that what we would um, would request is everybody who is on the line, if they could just give their approval that their uh, contact details can be distributed. Then, as long as that's given, then we'll we'll do that straight away, Tiffany. Okay. Well, this is uh, Laura McBrien from Cellucomp. And, hi, Laura. Um, hi, uh, or oh, Laura. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I keep forgetting. Um, I'm quite happy for um, contact details to be passed around. Right, no problem with that. Just ask people either to uh, to drop an email to to the address where they registered, or we'll send something out afterwards to say if you if you're happy for your contact details to be distributed. But Tiffany, yeah, I think it's all about building a community, so I don't see too many problems with that. Um, it's uh, Lillian Hamilton here from Scottish Enterprise. Uh, just really to to say that what we're looking to do is once the two exercises are finalised both the academic and the industry one, is really looking at exactly what the next steps are and how we look at, um, you know, whether it's setting up a small task group for individual projects, whether it's setting up a major network, um, all that will be certainly considered, I can assure you. And Lillian, just to give people a timeline on that, I guess that will be a... Um, to keep in mind, well, potentially we would anticipate the reports would be finalised probably certainly Q1 2015, and we would hope probably towards the latter part of that to actually be looking at setting up groups to further develop the concept. So, you know, ideally we will have coming out from early 2015 with perhaps a formulation of a network and or a task group by say, ideally maybe March 2015. You know, later date might be April, but certainly within that sort of time scale. Okay, thanks Lily. Does anyone else have any, any problem? thoughts or questions? Uh, David, this is, um, this is Jim. Hi. This is uh, Jim Bullock, David's uh, uh, colleague, as I formulate. Um, an idea or some ideas that have emerged in the last week or so um, that, that it might be worth floating in front of people at this stage, and we, we don't have to get a response to now, it's maybe something you can think about, is to, it, uh, one idea might be to, it's part of a, a networking activity that follows on from this study, it might be to work out whether there's a group of you know, innovative um, SMEs and startups who might form the basis of a, an innovation roadshow who could be uh, taken forward to meet with um, potential collaboration partners such as the la larger downstream formulating companies um, around the UK or elsewhere, or indeed with um, investors such as corporate venture investors. Um, so if that's seen as something that that um, introduction to you know potential collaboration partners, customers, and, in, uh, and uh, investors is seen as something which companies would be interested in. 
then then that's something we'd like some response on. So if if, if that's seen as a positive, potentially positive step, then then please say so. And likewise, if it's not, <laughs> that's not what you need to say so as well. I think that's a very, very valid point, Jim. It's, it's Lillian again, for those that don't know me. Um, and I think, you know, really the opportunity here is for industry and academia to, to feed in, to, to really give us a clue for what should we be doing and how could we be doing it, because we're not doing it for Scottish Enterprise if there is not a need from industry and potentially from academia. And it is our time to take the opportunity to take part in this consultation and really give us your views because we will respond. That's what this is all about. I've just got one thanks for that, Lane. I've got I've got one question saying what whatever is set up in Scotland, uh, will it work with the formulation centre in England or be a separate unit? Um, yeah. I think Lillian, do you want to answer that? Uh, I think what Scottish needs are um, at this point in time so it's, it's kind of a, you know, it could be a, an either or. Um, so I don't want to sort of preclude what's going to come out in the study, um, but we will be looking at it in the broader context, of course. Yeah, and it's, it's worth saying that the National Formulation Centre is a UK National Formulation Centre and, and not an English yes. Formulation Centre, yes. so uh, obviously it will be involving Scotland, um, but as you say there, there may be something specific to Scotland that comes out of the study that will be set up, and it may well be that there is not a National Formulation Centre at this stage, so um, there we go. Hopefully that's answered the question that was posed there. Okay. Hi, it's uh, Jack here from uh, Sensible, based in Edinburgh. Just want to follow on Jim saying that for startup and SME, I think it's especially useful because formulation is a really expensive business, and to be able to access facilities and, and apologies, it will, will be really useful. And uh, also, also read about the iBio IC. It's the best way to get involved. Sorry, missed that last part, Jack, about the IBIOIC. What was the comment? Yeah, yeah, I've been reading about it, but I, I know it's due, the sentence is due to uh, be established, but I wonder what is the best way for SME to get involved in, into the centre. Okay, I think we have um, somebody from the IBIOIC. I'd like to say the best way for an SME to get involved is to actually speak to somebody at IBIOIC, um, potentially um, in the first instance to Roger Kilburn, I think Patrick um, I can um, send you an address across. Yeah. Hi, it's Patricia Clark here from Patria. IYC. I was going to say, if <laughs> you want to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> Over to you. <laughs> yes, um, if, you, if you're a small SME looking to get involved, the best person to contact would be um, Paul Hudman, who's our business development manager. Um, I can send his details on through the, um, the um, interface bit here. Um, and they can be circulated round uh, the group. Okay. Thanks for that, Katriana. Thank you. Anyone else um, before we draw to a close? Okay. Well, at which stage I'd like to thank you all for your attention. There will be a recording. If you wish to see the slides or get a copy of the slides, please get in touch with us. Uh, and if you wish to get a, a copy of the recording, then similarly get in touch. And also, if you'd like to progress a bit further in the study and in the consultation, then please get in touch. So thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I wish you all a nice day. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.